Elizabeth Ryan coming to you from the EHS Management Forum in Tucson. Standing here with Howard Brown from DMAS.net. Howard, you just inspired our crowd with a, a quite an exciting picture of what the future could hold in terms of business innovation. And I was wondering if you could sort of explain to us a little bit about what you meant that we needed to decouple the production of stuff from the production of wealth. Well, there's no question that we're living in an increasingly resource constrained world. Half of the population of seven billion people still doesn't have access to the fruits of modern scientific society and wants that access. And yet uh, we're finding all these uh, increasing constraints on environmental stresses and, and constraints on the supply of the resources. So th th traditionally for the last 200 years of industrial revolution, we've been generating wealth by stimulating the economy and the idea is to generate more stuff, to make more things because when you make things, more things, you put people to use in the mines, you put people to use in transport, you put people to use in, in processing the resources and in, in, in manufacturing the products and shipping them around the world, etc. But that thinking will not work. I mean, even the, the man who invented the idea of GDP as a measure of success warned Congress when it adopted it, it uh, th that uh, measure as an official measure of economic activity that it was not a perfect measure and that it wouldn't always work under different conditions. So at a time when resources are widely available and cheap, it's absolutely true that you can track the well-being or the, the, uh, the quality of life of the people in a society and, and it will track relatively closely to GDP. But we know now that for uh, nearly a decade that the relationship between improving people's lives and GDP growth is no longer true. So you can keep uh, trying to do things to stimulate the economy and you can even uh, do things to increase the making of more stuff, but it doesn't necessarily make people's lives better anymore. One of the things that you also s said that I thought was so interesting was that people don't want light bulbs, they want light. How does this sort of shift in um, thinking about business models, you know, give us an environmental benefit? Okay, so the light bulb is, a, think of it this way, every product such as the light bulb is a delivery mechanism for div delivering a benefit, which is useful light when you need it. Uh, the the um, uh, th a lawnmower is a delivery mechanism for delivering an attractive lawn. A battery is a delivery mechanism for portable kilowatt hours. And that means it's, it's, the, me it's the means, not the ends. The end is the kilowatt hours. Is the, free the end is the freedom to do what I want, to use my devices when and where I want, my phone, etc. And so if we think that way, then we think, okay, so is there a better way to deliver that and you s we know that in medical research that's a big focus of what's going on in medical research how do you deliver the medicine w the minimal amount of medicine to exactly the right place so it has an optimal effect and that kind of thinking has to go in to uh, virtually every kind of product and the other thing that I thought was interesting that you mentioned today was that you know if you don't use it you don't spill it Right. So the idea is, the whole idea of DMAS is resource performance. So when I came to the, um, the NAEM conference uh, in, in Florida on performance measurement, it was really clear to me that we're spending too much time thinking, uh, trying to come up with a coherent set of metrics for measuring th what's coming out of the back end of all of our plants and uh, w and and. Uh, what are the effects of those on the biosphere? And those are really, really complicated questions for which there are no simple systematic answers. But on the other hand, if you realize that everything that goes into a business, uh, every, uh, I, I'm sorry, every, when you realize that everything that comes out of the back end of a business, all pollution and waste, is valuable resources that you paid to import you paid to dig out of the earth and process and ship around and make something out of and they got lost in the process. So if you 
that's all pollution is. So if you find ways of reducing the amount of resources that go in in the first place by redesigning the product, you're inherently going to reduce the amount of pollution coming out of the back end. And the converse of that is that no matter how good an environmental manager you are, if you're only focused on the back end and the company keeps growing, what comes out that you don't want to come out is going to only continue to increase no matter how good you are trying to reduce it. Thank you very much for taking the time. Appreciate it.